A beehive is a little like a stock market. Both involve huge numbers of transactions. It's the collective activities of many individuals that together give rise to the behavior of the market. And like at the stock exchange, no one individual is in charge. The queen is very well known, but she doesn't run the show. She has her job, which is to lay eggs. So how's the tagging going? With support from the National Science Foundation, entomologist Gene Robinson and mechanical engineer Harry Dankovich at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Come on in. And psychologist Whitney Tabor at the University of Connecticut are studying how coordination emerges in these leaderless complex systems. To be able to see the connection between individual behavior and overall behavior. A beehive is a useful model system to study how complex human systems work. A bee colony, just like any society, is constantly faced with challenges and new situations. Using high-resolution cameras, Robinson's team studies how bees interact deep inside the hive. You see tens of thousands of individuals bumping into each other, touching their antenna to another, possibly exchanging food or some other kind of interaction. Older bees forage for food. In the hive, they emit chemical signals that prevent the younger bees from maturing. But when there are fewer older bees, the absence of the chemical signals causes the younger bees to mature faster to pick up the slack. Just one of many types of asynchronous communication that go on in a beehive. Asynchronous communication goes on in all sorts of different contexts, in computers, in the brain. The brain has billions of neurons that are communicating in ways that we have yet to really figure out. A key challenge for both bees and humans is deciding who should do what when no one is in charge. This is a group coordination game that you're going to be playing with other people in the room. Since humans use language to communicate, Tabor's group is studying how people create communication systems for performing coordinated tasks. We don't let them actually talk to each other, so we're interested in the way a kind of language-like system develops in this context of having to do a joint task with other people. Dankovich's team maps both bee and human interactions. We want to see how complex systems adapt to challenges, to circumstances that enable them to be robust do not fail. Dankovich says first they must determine the patterns of coordination in these complex systems. The next challenge will be figuring out how to keep systems like these humming. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien.